Look, look at this. We're going to take this sprocket off. We're going to talk about some different ways that we should do it to do it the right way. Okay. But before you start yanking parts off, inspection's a big deal. So when I look at this here, I can see this is, you know, the, the locking washer is locked over securing the nut so it wasn't going to fall off. Right. Makes sense. Watch this. Okay. So I'm going to hold the transmission shaft here. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just entertain me here. Was that 22, four or five millimeter nut or something like that? What do you think that's torqued to? Steel shaft, steel nut. 60, 70. I bet it's even more. I bet it's in the 80s, 90s, something in that range or whatnot. Is this counter shaft one? How's that weird thing wiggling? Because it's not tight. Or, or what would be worse is we know that we have splines, okay? We have splines on the sprocket and we have splines on the transmission shaft. When they manufacture these, which splines do they make to probably be the weaker one? the sprocket because that should be the consumable so here's the thing if you look at this these teeth are kind of starting to curl forward you can see that a little bit that's a good indication that the sprocket's starting to wear but that thing doesn't look horrible right but if you keep riding on this think every time i accelerate and deaccelerate, what's that doing to the splines of the transmission shaft guys here's the thing this is why we we have chain drive vehicles. We can't think about this like a car where we're just like, oh, just let it go or whatnot. You know, anytime you have something that's chain driven, ATV, I don't care if you're working on a conveyor belt, this is the kind of stuff you want to look. With the chains attached on this, are you able to check that? No. 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 So do you see where stuff could be kind of taken for granted? It would hide itself. You wouldn't even know this. I'm going to tell you a little story here to kind of wrap this up. On my personal bike, on my Triumph Tiger, uh, I, you know, looking on eBay and trying to find used parts, I kept seeing crankshafts. And uh, I was like, God dang, like, well, I sure a lot of crankshafts or whatnot. I'd see different things or whatnot. And then all of a sudden I read a forum where the flywheel was like breaking off. And I don't know if it was my year, but it was enough to where I was like, the flywheels are breaking off. I really like my bikes. So I thought I'm gonna go on eBay and, you know, start picking up some of those crankshafts is what I thought you know so someday when I need one I'll have a nice low mileage one for when mine breaks off right pretty stupid worrying about it that far ahead but I like the bike so the thing is uh, I'm I own my bike and all of a sudden my bike starts to get uh, the knock and it sounds like a rod knocking and I all I could picture is that crankshaft like oh no I must be getting that point and I thought okay I'm just gonna start tearing it down and my plan was just to go ahead and take the covers off and check for play or whatnot Anyway, for whatever reason, I was doing some maintenance and I go to uh, pull this cover off and just check things out and I could take my sprocket and this nut, even with the lock tab on it, was rolled, it was rolled over and I could take the nut and sit and wiggle it back and forth. It had lost its tension somehow and I was like, what the heck? But I wasn't the last person to put it on. So I did the whole last person's the problem. You know, they didn't do it. I kid you not. Within two years, this bike I've had for a long time, I started to get that same knock and I would take off. And especially with a passenger, when I would take off, it almost felt like the chain was wanting to hop. I'd get a clunk. And then as soon as I was rolling, <clears throat> it, you wouldn't hear it anymore. But always from that first takeoff, I'm getting that clunk right away. I thought, no kid you not there's a video somewhere out there on my channel or something i pulled that cover off you know grabbed it it had come loose i staked it i torqued it i torqued it correctly and it had worked itself loose i kid you not i just unstaked it torqued it back it accepted full torque torque wrench clicked problem went away i'm getting ready to uh, do some major service on that bike again this year it's only been a year but i'm going to be really anxious to look at that interesting thing i went and did another tiger of a different year but pretty much the same uh, motor and everything else and on that customer's bike his sprocket was loose too so it made me start to think is there is this more common than we really think so now penny when i see this bandit here and this is happening i'm not so shocked i think that it's just that we overlook it more you know and i think how many chain and sprockets i've ever changed and i didn't check it you know, you want to be thinking about as you work on your craftsmanship to consider, you know, looking at the integrity. If I pull that sprocket off and the splines are really crappy, I know that the splines on the transmission shaft could be an issue too. So there's the story of checking it. Now we got to think about how to take it off correctly. We need to unstake any of this washer that's on here. And then what tool do we probably grab to take that nut off? Impact. An impact, right? So I want to recommend this. Always in neutral. Never put this in gear. 
This is better if you can leave the chain on and apply the brake to be your holding tool. Or if this baby's really stuck on there, these little Motion Pro pliers, remember we use this on a clutch basket, and we could take these and try and see how we can fit in here. I got in here good enough. Something like that, and then that would hold it so I could go ahead and get that off. Make sure not hurt anything up here, but you get where I'm going with this? Yep. So this is for installation as well. This is the big one. So whether you put the chain on and use a torque wrench to get that torque to spec, this this guy's a this is a big one, right? So this is gonna be one that impact, don't just sit there and honk on it. If I take a half inch impact and I go da 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 and like ah that's tight, what am I potentially hurting? Shaft, shaft forks, everything in the transmission. The thing that I think hurts more, this is pretty big. We could hurt the splines, you're absolutely, or the uh, threads, I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. But the big thing I'm really worried about, especially way over torquing this with an impact, is also the bearing, okay? Because I'm side loading the race, the inner race. This collar that's behind here is going up against the inner race. And if that is meant to be 87 foot pounds, and I put a hundred on it, it means I'm shoving that inner race tighter and tighter against the other side, so it's hard on the bearing too. If we do it right, like life's amazing, right? Like no big deal. So that's definitely something we want to uh, want to think about there. Um, restaking our, our wash over, this is something I think people just plain forget about. If you might want to think about, can I move this to a different spot to grab a new bit of meat on that washer? Anything else you guys want to add? We think, oh, I heard something that made me think about too. So we said uh, in neutral, why do we need to put it in neutral? So you don't bend shift forks. So you don't bend shift forks, right? Because people say, oh, that doesn't matter. Okay, if I take this and I think about it's locked onto the transmission shaft with all the gears in there and the forks are on there and they're not wanting to move, okay, because I'm, I'm locked in gear, but I'm trying to turn this turning that transmission shaft is then taking the shift forks which you've seen in all our videos and you guys in class they're pretty thin and it's side loading them and you could take a shift fork and end up bending it uh, i'm really shocked how many times people argue about that say oh that'll never happen and then you could talk to anybody that's happened to them like yeah bad deal i know when i used to work out of my garage and i was taught this early on one of the tricks i'd do when i was alone if this thing was really stuck and i didn't have this and i had the chain on i'd take and put a two by four right in between here, okay, in between the spoke and the wheel, I'd lay a two by four across the two. And I'll never forget one time, I had a big breaker bar on there trying to take one off a Ninja, you know, years ago, and it broke the two by four. So they're on there, okay, no impacts. Uh, we could do this without causing any hurt or any damage. So we'll get this off and we'll take a look at it and see. You saw a video we did yesterday. Do you guys remember that where the nut was loose? Or excuse me, the nut was torqued, but the sprocket was loose. Mm -hmm. So we have it off and check this out and start to see the wear. See where the, the rolled up lip is there? Take a look at what we got going on. We got the old sprocket here. See that play in there? Yep. So even with that nut torqued, we had that. So we're like, ah, who cares? We're putting new sprockets on. But we have that spline damage on the transmission shaft from this not being serviced. But check this out. This is kind of wild. Here is a couple of sprockets. Let's go ahead and get down here. Here's a couple of sprockets, and they were debating on what gearing they were gonna do, so we just grabbed this one and right on there. This is brand new, mind you. Okay, well, look at this. See how bad that is? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean it's, it, that's just terrible. I mean, you accelerate, even when you torque this on, this is such a loose fit on there. It's just gonna, it's gonna hurt those splines even worse, which is hurting the transmission shaft. This is a bad deal. So your initial reaction, since this is new, would make you think that this, this shaft is just horrible, right? Absolutely. Check this out. Look here, back down here. So these are the, these are the exact same thing, supposed to be, but just a different number of teeth. This one here, okay, we got kinda, actually, force it on there. Can you get in there and actually show on the spline here how much wider? Like if you look at the spline of the transmission shaft and the sprocket. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna put the other one back on. Okay, go to this one. Do you That's see? Not OEM. This is Suzuki? Yeah. OEM Suzuki. Yeah. 
but you'd think it'd be hard to beat OEM Suzuki, right? So that would definitely make you think that that shaft is just horrible. We know the shaft's bad. We see the, we see the proof, but check this out. Go ahead and look at this. Now what we're going to do, you'll have to tell me if you could see. I want, what I want you to compare is look at the width of that flat right there. Mm -hmm. Give me some now, or give me a yep. acknowledge. Now check this one out. Maybe this will work to do them. Quite a bit wider. Look how much wider it is. Absolutely. So like literally in this case, this customer saying, I don't care, put her back together or whatnot. This aftermarket JT sprocket has a much wider spline, which if we look at the width that we really want, is wider. It's almost like the Suzuki one's too pointed. You get what I'm saying? Yep. yep. You sure that's Suzuki? You sure? No, the other one, the Sunshine one's a JT. Right, that's JT, but this one here that's really loose, you're sure that's OEM Suzuki? I don't think so. I'll have to check the package, see if it's aftermarket. I think, I think, what, here's what I think. I think that this is just some aftermarket brand. I don't believe this is OEM Suzuki. I'm telling you what, because this OEM Suzuki, like that stuff fits perfect, right? Hey, Kirk, you watching? Kirk? <laughs> Not Kirk. Kirk? Uh, your Suzuki stuff fits pretty tight, right? All right, this JT, is that pretty impressive? Mm -hmm. Yes. The wide spline, this, that. What are we trying to really say? What's the whole point of what we're doing right now? Real estate. Yeah, inspect your parts. You can get brand new parts that aren't gonna fit very well, right? Yep. So here, here's the other thing. Do we just put this on dry? No. no. Anytime we're dealing with splines, what's the recommended grease? Or lubricant, I should say. Molly. Molly. Remember we talked about in the shaft drives that we put Molly on spline surfaces, but we'll check our manual. So we're gonna Molly that up. The other thing I want you to notice here is, you remember how there was damage back here? If we look at those splines, if we look here, we have a uh, we have a spot where it's supposed to be exposed. The sprocket needs to go all the way back against the spacer, so we torque it and take up that whole gap, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to do it yet because we want to actually spline this. But do you see how we've got to overcome some damage to get that on? Yep. But it's going to make it tight, okay? Just for purposes of educating you guys. See, the last brand was a JT. So our replacement JT is gonna be the same exact one. Do you see how proud this is? Yep, yes. Okay, the reason that's so proud is so that you could put your new lock washer we're gonna get. You could see where this one, do you see where it actually rolled over? Yep. And then when we put the nut on, it's still a little bit proud and something to think about. It's why you can't go to Baumgart or something. Do you see where that's machined? Yep. So that machined area is for that little proud spot of that shaft to be able to come into so that I can actually get this surface to clamp against here, to clamp against that spacer to suck up the bearing and, and make the whole assembly tight. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of things to look at. You get what I'm saying? That's a lot Absolutely. of things to look at. It'd be so easy. Would you guys say that like chain and sprockets, you're sitting there going, oh, I'm just gonna take it for granted, you know, like, you know, just slap them on there kind of thing. I, here's where I'm at. Yesterday, and I saw this damage on here. We know our customer's not going to pull the motor, split the cases, put the shaft on here. They're not broken off. It's 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 damaged. What are we going to do on the work order? Note it. We're going to note it. And you know what? I bet there's a million people out there that would love to just tear me up right now. Just like, oh, replace that. You know, that needs done. You guys know you're going to shops. You're going to workplaces where people are saying, hey, we're gonna move forward on this. Ideally, we would love to put a new one in there, right? Yeah, right? In a perfect world. In a perfect world, that's what we wanna do. That's what we recommend, but um, anyway, we're being realistic here. This is what's gonna happen. With this one here, This, I, I think this is like a quote unquote, I'm not gonna attach a brand to it, but I must say this is a generic. This probably, this sprocket, here, I, well, let's talk about this. Talk about the parts department, okay? This sprocket, was probably, you know, 1095, <laughs> right? This one, the JT one, what are these front sprockets? 20, 20, 30 bucks, something like that. You know what I mean? Like $11.50. For the JT? You betcha. $11.50, so this was like 38 cents. 
the whole I got the chain. <laughs> Both crockets and the chain was 175 bucks. Now I want to focus on these. Okay. Okay. Here's that whole quality thing. You know, when you guys sometimes you're sitting there and you're thinking, geez, God, why is one so much more than another? You bet quality control's better on this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This thing's gonna spit these out. They're going off a cast, maybe pushing a die through that. Uh, this is what you're paying for. You're paying for that quality. Even look at the finish. This one's a little bit rougher. It's not horrible. I'm not like I'm not gonna die over it, but this this one here, this JT stuff, I've used a lot of their stuff over the years too. I think they are priced well. And I would recommend on the stuff to buy that brand name versus the generic stuff. If it's a 100 cc, you know, dirt bike that runs around the farm, we probably don't care, right? But I mean, if it's you know 1200 cc, you know, street bike's gonna, you know, the customer attention or from what we hear, rides this bike pretty aggressively. Yeah. Not pointing out anybody named Doug. Not at all. <laughs> Casey watches this. Has nothing to do with wheelies and hard acceleration <laughs> braking. Never seen the guy ever do such a thing. Keep wrenching. Just nuts and bolts.